Web browsers are one of the most controversial topics in the privacy community. People get fiercely defensive of their favorite browser and all the reasons that they think theirs is the best browser. But I think we can all agree on one thing. Google Chrome sucks. Back in the day, Chrome was the best of the best, but these days it has become slow, bloated, and spies on virtually everything you do on behalf of Google, from your browsing history to even your microphone in some cases. If you want to regain privacy online, Chrome has got to go. But there are so many browsers out there that claim to be privacy focused. Which one is right for you? In this video, I will highlight my top two recommendations, Brave and Firefox, and help you decide which one is right for you. Before I jump into the content, if you find this video helpful or any of the other videos on my channel, be sure to help support the new oil. Your support can help keep us free from influence and ensure that we are able to keep putting out high quality content as well as take on new projects. So if you are able, please consider supporting. We accept a variety of fiat currency methods as well as a number of cryptocurrencies. So again, if you are able, please help support us. If not, you can also help support us by just sharing the video around and spreading the word. Let me start off with a message to the veteran viewers in the audience. You are inevitably going to ask, why didn't I pick your favorite browser? Whether that's LibreWolf or ungoogled Chromium or Pale Moon or some obscure CLI that you cooked up yourself. Here are my criteria for browser recommendations. Number one, it must be available on desktop for Mac, Windows, and Debian-based Linux distros. I will explain in a different video why I prefer Debian. Number two, it must be capable of auto updates. And finally, number three, it must receive regular updates, preferably at least once per month. There are some other criteria, but frankly, those three alone rule out 90% of the other browsers that are out there. If you think you have a browser that fits all the criteria, which I will include in the show notes, feel free to reach out and let me know. Maybe I will list it on the website. It's also important to note that if you are more advanced and you have found something that works for you, congratulations, this video is not aimed at you. This video is aimed at the average person who knows they need to get off Chrome, but isn't sure what to pick. If you found something that works for you and you trust it and it's reliable and you vetted it, good for you, keep using it. For everyone else who's unsure, let's keep going. It's important to note that both Brave and Mozilla, which is the company behind Firefox, are not perfect. Both companies have made pretty big mistakes that have caused users to question their motives, commitment to privacy and security, and methods. It's up to you to decide which company fits your ethics better and who you trust more. Let's go in alphabetical order and talk about Brave scandals first. Brave's criticisms mostly revolve around their own cryptocurrency called BAT, or Basic Attention Tokens. Many of their critics consider the default inclusion of BAT to be unnecessary bloatware, especially considering that it's a custom cryptocurrency instead of something more vetted like Bitcoin or Monero. Additionally, BAT has been at the center of a number of scandals. There was the time that Brave was collecting tips in BAT on behalf of a creator who hadn't agreed to it and didn't even know that people were tipping him. There's also the time that Brave was changing certain links to become affiliate links in real time so that as users navigated the web, Brave would get a small kickback because because users were visiting their affiliate links. These issues have since been fixed, but the concerns surrounding them are understandable. And for the record, I don't think those are the only issues. Those are just kind of the big ones that keep coming up from critics. Mozilla draws fire for a different set of reasons. Their most common criticisms include taking money from Google to make it the default search engine because most people don't change the defaults, making Mozilla's analytics enabled by default rather than opt-in despite claiming to be a privacy respecting company, and being accused of mismanaging company funds while struggling for financial solvency. They've also been criticized for ignoring user feedback and instead coming up with their own monetization plans that often seem to have no demand or target audience. When users say that they want this thing or they don't want this thing, Mozilla doesn't really seem to pay attention. They just kind of do whatever they want. And then surprise, surprise, like two years later, they shut down whatever they launched because nobody wanted it. I could literally spend half of this video just listing all of the projects that Mozilla has created, marketed, and then quickly shut down because nobody used them they're not very good at reading the market and knowing how to make money, which has led many to wonder how long they will even be able to stay in business. At this time, there are no signs that they're gonna go out of business, but to be completely honest, I do think that's a fair question to ask. They don't seem to be very good at making money. 
Having said all that, both browsers do have redeeming qualities worth mentioning. Both of them are open source, which means that any knowledgeable outsiders can examine the code and report weaknesses or suggest improvements. This is really important since both of these browsers are really popular, so they probably have a lot of eyes on them. Both companies do have a good track record of listening to their users when it comes to vulnerabilities and fixing them. Mozilla especially has really stepped up their game in privacy and security in the last few years. They've added some really powerful features and default settings that even out of the box without a lot of changes does make Firefox a pretty decent browser. Once again, neither company is perfect, and I'm not trying to say that either one of them is. Both of them have made some glaring mistakes, but at the same time, neither of them have made any major mistakes that compromise the browser itself to the point of making it unfit for recommendation. Neither of them are perfect, but that doesn't mean that the product they've created should be thrown out because they do have redeeming qualities. This is, of course, my opinion. I know someone in the comments will disagree with me. Both of them will definitely require some tweaking to improve on the default settings, but I don't think it's fair to just instantly discard either option. Both of them are worth considering. Pro tip, if you are still on the fence, here's one way to look at it. Brave runs on the Chromium engine, which is considered to have better behind the scenes security than Firefox's Gecko engine. Meanwhile, Firefox is significantly more customizable, and there are numerous guides available online for how to harden Firefox for maximum privacy. In other words, if security is your top concern, Brave is probably the browser for you. If privacy is your top concern, Firefox will probably offer you the most opportunity for maximum privacy. Personal opinion related to the security aspect. As long as you're careful about what sites you visit, what links you click on, and you keep your software updated, I don't think Brave's improved security is really going to be noticeably better than Firefox for most end users. If you have good common sense in regards to your browsing habits, then it's almost 100% personal preference. I would really only consider the security versus privacy difference if you're truly 100% on the fence and you can't pick which one to go with. Or alternately, just try them both. There is nothing to stop you from trying them both out and deleting the one that you don't like. So as I said, no matter which browser you go with, there are a few tweaks that you can and should make. While both browsers by default will be a significant improvement over Chrome, you can do even better with just a few small behind the scenes tweaks that you will never even notice once they're done, but they will offer you a massive step up in terms of privacy and security. Okay, so we're gonna start by downloading Brave. I'm using Firefox here. I actually keep both Brave and Firefox on my machine. I personally like to harden Firefox and then use that, but sometimes when you harden Firefox, there are things that don't work. So I keep Brave as a backup. You may be using Chrome, you may be using Edge, that's fine, it doesn't matter. Open your current browser and we'll go to brave.com and then we'll just download Brave right there on the front page and we will save and we will install it, we will run it, we will click yes. I'm gonna go ahead and close Firefox because we're done with that now. Okay, so here's Brave and you know, it walks you through a little welcome tour where you can import your bookmarks if you want. And um, you know, it explains how it's got this built-in shield and content blocker. Now Brave does, and also the uh, bat that I told you about. Now here's the thing, bat is entirely optional. You do not have to use bat at all. You can totally ignore it or you can use it if you want. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. Brave does come with a built-in ad blocker, which is pretty cool, but to be honest, I find their ad blocker to leave a little bit to be desired. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the menu over here and we're gonna go to extensions. And then we're gonna find extensions in the web store. And we're gonna go for uBlock Origin. Now, make sure you're getting this first one created by Raymond Hill. See how there's like ad block and I've, I've seen others like it's U block without the origin. I've seen others. That's, that's the point. Just make sure you're getting the right one. I will leave a link in the show notes. Now we're going to add to Brave, add extension. So one thing Brave does that I don't really like, but I guess some people might like is it doesn't show your plugins up here by default. It's actually hidden behind this little puzzle piece. But once you click on it, you can pin it. And now here it shows. Or if you don't want to pin it and you just want to use it once, you click on it. But either way, whatever you choose to do, you click on it and you click these settings. 
Now, I recommend blocking CSP reports. And these default filters are, of course, what the developer recommends. Personally, I like to enable everything. I've never had any issues with that. I mean, regions, you might have some issues there. But yeah, if you live in one of these foreign countries, be sure to enable those. Yeah, I just like to enable all of these. I've never had any problems. So there's a couple things that I think makes uBlock worth adding, even though you've already got the built-in ad blocker. One of them is it adds malicious domains, malware, phishing, stuff like that. Another thing is it works on tracker links. So if you wanna share a link with somebody, a lot of the time there's these things called tracker links, which I should totally make a video about someday. You copy this link and you send it to your friends and when they click on it, it tells the company all kinds of things about you and them and your relationship to each other. With uBlock Origin and this uh, URL tracking protection, it erases the tracking portion on a lot of links and gives you some of that privacy back. You can share links with people without all the tracking crap being there. It's really awesome. And then same with like a uh, block outsider intrusion in the LAN, it can help protect your home network. So yeah, again, personally, I like to enable everything. I've never had any issues with that. There is one more plugin we're gonna go get and we have to go all the way back and it's going to be local CDN. Now what this plugin will do, I am not a developer, but this is what I've been told. So I apologize if I'm wrong. When developers develop websites, they use a lot of third-party libraries because those allow you to do really cool things on websites, but it allows you to not reinvent the wheel. It's kind of like, imagine you're creating a delivery company. Why would you build a brand new car from scratch and design it yourself when you can go out and buy a delivery car? That's kind of what this is, is they're saying, I want to do this thing. I'm just going to use what somebody else has made, which is fine. The problem is sometimes these third party libraries might be able to help track you. Like for example, if Google manages that library, so what local CDN does is it, first of all, proxies the library so that it helps protect your IP address from tracking. And then it also isolates each library so that it can't track you across websites. Again, if I'm wrong about that, I will update that, but that is how it was explained to me. So we are gonna wanna add this. To my knowledge, Brave does not have any like individual tab isolation and local CDN will help with that. Check in, there we go. It's pretty much, ready to go by default, to be honest. You don't really need to do anything. You just, every so often you can see how much it's blocked. Now then, let's talk about the settings. So we'll go over here and we will scroll down to settings. We're gonna wanna make sure that Brave is our default. On startup, I prefer a new tab or like a specific home page. That one's really personal preference. We will go to appearance. I don't like autocomplete, so I like to turn that off. I don't care for top sites, honestly. You can hide Brave Rewards and look at that. Now you don't have to deal with Bat. If you don't like Bat, there you go. It just went away. Isn't that awesome? Out of sight, out of mind. Just pretend it was never there. I prefer to always show the full URL just to make sure that I'm actually where I wanna be. So here's the new tab page. Again, you can make it a home page. You can make it a blank page. I prefer blank pages. So this is the shield. Honestly, this is probably fine as is. If you try to aggressively do some of this stuff, you may break things. In my opinion slash experience, uBlock Origin will take care of most of this and cause less breakage. It's entirely up to you, but I think this section is fine to leave as is. Now, Brave Rewards, again, if you're not using it, it doesn't matter. If you do decide to use it, then go ahead and open the rewards panel and get started, sign in, pick your wallet, all that crap. Social media blocking. Personally, I like to block all of these. These are basically those little widgets you see at the bottom of a website that say like, oh, share this on Facebook or share this on Twitter. Fun fact, those things track you. Every time you see the like share on Facebook page, Facebook is tracking you through that thing, through the tracking pixel. So yeah, if you block all of these, you will regain a significant amount of privacy. And if you go to a website where you decide you wanna share this on Facebook, guess what? Open a new tab, go to Facebook and post it. And then you can add comments and stuff too. Like, yeah, just block all of these. They're all crap. Okay, so security and privacy. So these are your analytics from Brave. I prefer to turn them off because I prefer the privacy. Is Brave going to abuse these analytics? I don't think so, but you never know if they're gonna get caught in a data breach or something like that. Or if God forbid they will turn out to be malicious, that goes for Firefox too. So. It's entirely up to you. You can go ahead and say, well, you know, if we're gonna be using this FOSS software, it's our moral duty to help the developers and send 
data. And if you feel that way, go for it. I'm not here to tell you how to feel. If you go down here, what I like to do is I like to clear everything on exit. And the reason is because unfortunately, we have seen a lot of malware in the past that is capable of stealing your browser history and things that are in your browser, including passwords and saved stuff in your forms. So I recommend never saving passwords in your browser. If you want that one click capability in both my KeyPass and Bitwarden videos, I talked about how to add the plugin, which will give you that capability. Never save anything in the browser. Now, granted, by doing this, this means every time you launch the browser, you will have to log into websites all over again. So if you go to your ProtonMail, you have to log in, or if you go to social media, you're gonna have to log in. If that's the case, then you're not gonna wanna uncheck cookies. However, keep in mind that even with uBlock Origin and even with the settings saying don't store third-party tracking cookies, there's still the possibility that some of them might sneak through. So in my opinion, it's better to just sign into everything. But again, that's up to you to figure out where you draw that line between privacy and convenience. Cookies, third-party cookies are blocked by default, which is fine. Um, again, I like to clear cookies. I like to send a do not track with my browsing traffic. Truthfully, we know nobody honors that. But to me, it's more about just making a statement, just saying like, hey, I don't want you to track my stuff. They're gonna do it anyways. But again, it's just about that moral stance. If you would rather just blend in and not send any special flags at all. That's totally fine and I respect that. It's up to you. Security, standard protection is probably fine. Always use secure connections is great because for example, if we go to http slash slash thenewoil.org, you'll notice it automatically upgraded me to an encrypted connection with that S right there. That's what the S means is HTTP secure. Yeah, enable that, it's awesome. I only recommend adding a custom DNS if you will not be using a VPN. If you will be using a VPN, just go with your current service provider. If you're not using a VPN, Quad9 is a good one. Next DNS is a good one. Stay away from Google, obviously. Cloudflare is a bit controversial. I, I would say they're probably better than your ISP, your internet service provider, but there's better options. There's Quad9, there's Next DNS, and there's even custom. You can enter your own custom provider. Okay, sync. That's entirely up to you if you wanna make a, a profile and sync it. Search engine. So Brave recently launched their own search engine. In my experience, it's not bad. It's pretty stable. It's okay. Out of the choices given, I would prefer to use DuckDuckGo. Start page is also an option, but yeah. You can also manage search engines and add your own default search engine. So moving on, we've got our extensions. We probably don't want Google for anything. Private window with Tor, I strongly advise against this. And that's because one of the advantages of the Tor browser, if you go and watch that video that I made about Tor, which I will link in the description, one of the advantages of the Tor browser is that it is designed to look like every other Tor browser, which means everyone using the internet looks exactly the same and it becomes significantly harder to fingerprint and track someone. So, I would never use Tor with anything other than the stock Tor browser. I would not modify it at all. Just make sure these are turned off. If you need to use Tor, use the Tor browser. And actually there was one time that there was a, a vulnerability with this that exposed your IP address. So I'm not trying to crap on Brave. I know they mean well, and I think that's really cool that they're trying to innovate like this, but I strongly advise against this. Wallet, you really only need to worry about this if you're gonna use Brave for cryptocurrency. And then IPFS is something else. You can leave that blank as well. So autofill, I mentioned before, don't save anything, use password managers. So we're gonna uncheck all of this so that we don't accidentally save anything. Languages, use your language. Downloads, ask where to save each file, that's good. If malware were to try to download in the background, it would pop up and ask you, where do you wanna save it? At which point you can be like, hold on a minute, I didn't agree to this. Help tips, you can leave that if you want, or you can turn it off. System, these are all probably fine. And then of course, reset settings. And that's a total walkthrough of everything we got. That's Brave. Go forth and enjoy Brave and a more private, safer internet browsing experience. <laughs>so we're going to start by going to firefox.com and for those of you who recognize yes i am using brave that's because i no longer have edge or chrome or anything like that i do have both brave and firefox personally whatever browser you're currently using chrome edge safari go to firefox.com it will automatically redirect you to mozilla.org 
whatever region you're in slash Firefox, who cares? Click download Firefox and it sees I am on Windows 10. We're gonna wait for the automatic download and then we're gonna save. And yes, I recently downloaded Portmaster, so that is also there. Okay, once it's done, we will just click on it and we will run it. We will allow it. I'm gonna go ahead and close Brave now because we're done with that. Okay, so here we have our Firefox. We're gonna open it for the first time. And here it is. I don't know why it just popped up with like two windows, but whatever. Now we're gonna start with plugins because I think this is where you're gonna get the best bang for your buck. We're gonna go here to the settings up in the corner. We're gonna click on add-ons and themes, and then we're gonna search for uBlock Origin. Make sure there's a lot of different uh, ad blockers out there. Make sure you get this one by Raymond Hill. This is the correct one. We're gonna add to Firefox. And of course, I will leave a link to this in the show notes. We're gonna add. Personally, I like to allow all my extensions to run in private windows, even though I never use private windows. Now, once it's installed, I didn't tell you what this was. This is an extremely powerful ad blocker and tracker blocker. It's fantastic. It does so many things actually. And you're gonna see some of them. So we'll click on this and we will click the settings. Looks like some of this stuff is already enabled by default, which is good. So we're gonna go over to filter lists. Now these are the recommended default settings from the developer, of course. Personally, I am a fan of enabling everything. I've never had any issues with this, but the developer does admit that you may experience some website breakage. For me, this works fantastic. Now I said it does more than just add in tracker blocking. Look, for example, the URL tracking protection, this will remove tracking links off of URLs if you go to share them with your friends or the outsider intrusion into LAN, this will protect your local area network. Like there's really some powerful stuff here and I totally, totally recommend it. It just blocks known trackers, known malware, you know, as you can see on here, malicious URL, phishing URL. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. And let me actually show you we're gonna go with something tried and true here that we can all relate to. We're gonna go to YouTube and we're going to load up, uh, let's see. And so here we are on this video. As you can see, it just loaded up right away and there's nothing here at the bottom, which uh, for those of you who have never used an ad blocker before, you'll be amazed by that. Now here is how it looks without uBlock Origin. First, we have uh, this pop up for YouTube TV, gross, go away. And then we've got this ad right here for Purdue University, who I didn't know ran ads, that's pretty wild. And then when we skip that, in my experience, if we wait long enough, we will eventually see, oh, we've already got an ad over here. We've got an ad right here. I think these were already in the recommended, but yeah, it's, uh, well, it's not popping up, but in my experience, there have been ads down here too. Maybe we need to fast forward a little bit. But I mean, yeah, like you you saw the difference right off the bat. You block origin, uh, this, this side ad went away, uh, this intro ad went away, all these little commercial ads, it'll skip every one of those. It's fantastic. And honestly, that's probably the only plugin you really need for Firefox, if we're being totally honest. It blocks a lot of trackers, it blocks a lot of ads, and Firefox, again, has all these really cool built-in features to help protect you. There is one more I do wanna give an honorable mention to. It is called Local CDN. If you plan to use a VPN, then you don't need this one because you get the same effect by using total cookie protection, which I will talk about in the settings here in a minute. But if you don't plan to use a VPN, then this can help. What this does, without going too deep into it, there's a lot of websites out there that are built using what are called third-party libraries. Basically, somebody else has already gone out there and created like jQuery and Bootstrap and AngularJS, which are things that allow you to do really cool and creative things with a website. So rather than rebuild it from the ground up, a lot of developers will use these freely available third-party libraries and just borrow their resources. 
The problem is a lot of these are run by companies like Google. And so there's a lot of concern that maybe Google might be able to track you by loading these third-party libraries. So what local CDN does is basically act as a third-party proxy and help keep those libraries from tracking you. The reason you don't need this if you're using a VPN is because the VPN will protect your IP address and the total cookie protection will kind of isolate each tab by itself. So when the library is loaded, it's isolated to that tab. For the record, this is a gross, gross oversimplification. I am not a programmer, but this is how it was explained to me. So if you are using Firefox with a VPN, you don't need this guy. There's really no settings you need to change. It starts off enabled by default and you can just let it run. Let's get down to the settings because this is really another area where you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. So we'll go over to this little hamburger thing again. We will go to settings. You will start off by wanting to make Firefox your default browser. Scroll down here. A, a lot of this stuff is personal preference. Downloads, it's usually a good idea to click ask where to save downloads because that way if something tries to download like malware, it'll pop up and say, where do you wanna save this? And you can be like, wait a minute, I didn't agree to that. Automatic updates, I strongly encourage. So I would go ahead and leave that checked. Browsing, I would uncheck these bottom two, recommended features. You don't need those. Annoying is what they are to be totally honest. For network settings, again, if you're not using a VPN, you will want to enable DNS over HTTPS. I recommend Next DNS. Privacy Guides has a great list of DNS resolvers that you can use. I will leave that in the show notes. If you are using a VPN, you don't need this. Next, we'll go over to Home. This is more of a personal preference thing, but I would uncheck all this crap because I don't care about sponsored ads on my homepage. And then I would make it a custom URL. For me, I usually use a search engine, like I use Cirex, or I, I guess it's technically called search, but that's my search engine of preference. You can make it whatever you want. You can make it ESPN. You can make it DuckDuckGo. You can make it the new oil.org if you want, just saying. It doesn't change a lot, honestly. I wouldn't recommend that. It'd be a pretty boring homepage. Okay, search bar. Changing whether you want the search bar to be separate or not, that's entirely up to you. I prefer to put it right there in the address bar because I wanna be able to quickly type my searches. Defaults. This is important. Get rid of Google. Change it to anything else. Back in the day, Firefox used to let you certain search engines, you could add them as a default and then they would show up right here and you could pick them. Firefox has kind of done away with that, unfortunately. Hopefully they will add it back. Although, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Mozilla does not really like to listen to their users. So they're probably not gonna add that back. So I guess in the meantime, DuckDuckGo. What I do is I have DuckDuckGo set as my default, but then I have crex.be and this is my homepage. So that way, let me show you, set homepage, use current page. So now every time I hit the home button, it takes me to CRX and I can do my search term. But if I'm in a pinch and I just really quickly need to search for something, then it defaults to DuckDuckGo and I'm still pretty well protected. So that's what I do. You of course can do something different. We're going back to search engine. I also like to remove all of these other search engines because I don't want to accidentally click on them and I don't want them updating and loading on my machine. I also like to turn off search, search suggestions because I don't like my search engine trying to guess what I'm thinking. Okay, privacy and security. So here's that uh, total cookie protection I told you about. So I recommend using custom. For cookies, I recommend all third-party cookies. Now, I think maybe once I've seen this break a website personally, it can happen. In my experience, it's kind of rare. If you experience a lot of issues with that, you could just go to cookies from unvisited sites or cross-site tracking. Pretty much any of these are good. My preferred is third party. I prefer to turn on tracking content in all windows and then crypto miners and fingerprinters. So it will try its best to reduce fingerprinting and crypto mining. I prefer to send do not track. Honestly, nobody honors do not track. They're gonna track you anyways. But to me, it's about sending a statement of saying, hey, I don't wanna be tracked. There is also the argument to be made that maybe that makes you stand out more. So it's entirely up to you. I also like to delete cookies and site data when Firefox is closed. Now keep in mind, this might sign you out of some stuff and you may have to sign in every time. Personally, I don't mind that. Okay, logins and passwords. Never, ever, ever, ever save your logins and passwords in your browser. That goes for Firefox, that goes for Brave, that goes for Chrome, that goes for everything. Because unfortunately we have seen many times malware that will steal any data that is stored in the browser and that includes your passwords. If you need to save your passwords in the browser, 
you will want to use a password manager extension. I talked about this in my videos about both KeePass and Bitwarden. So if you're curious about that, go check those out. If you need to save your passwords, if you don't wanna do the copy and paste thing, that's the way to do it. So we're gonna turn all these off. And then again, I don't like my browser to remember my history or any data about me. This will mean you have to sign back in every single time, but it also protects you from malware. If you absolutely have to stay signed in, then you'll wanna uncheck delete cookies and here as well, uh, delete cookies. That'll keep you signed in. But in my opinion, that also increases the risk of tracking. Do what's right for you. But personally, I wanna delete all this stuff. Same thing with the dress bar. I just don't want it pulling my history or searches or anything like that. Permissions, if you know you're never gonna use this stuff, you can go ahead and tell it, you know, don't ask me for location. I know it's never gonna use that. Um, I don't like notifications, they bug me. Virtual reality, I don't own virtual reality. Block pop-up windows. Here is Firefox data use and collection. I personally would turn those off. I don't wanna send data back to Mozilla. If you want to be a better person than me and say, no, they need that data to improve the product, feel free to keep this one, the technical and interaction data. You can also do crash reports. Keep in mind, you're giving up a little bit of privacy with these. Is Mozilla gonna do anything malicious with that? Probably not. It could get caught up in a data breach, it could get leaked. Like we've seen stories in the past where people accidentally upload medical documents to GitHub publicly. So this kind of stuff is possible. Keep in mind, technically this will not shut off all telemetry, but it will cut off a lot of it. If you wanna cut off all telemetry, you're gonna have to find one of those hardening guides that I recommended. And last but not least, enable HTTPS mode in all windows. And basically what this does is if you ever go to a website that doesn't have encryption or has outdated encryption certificates, it will pop up and warn you. I don't know if I can actually make it do it here. Let's try. Nope. So as you can see right there, it automatically redirected me to the encrypted version of the website. And if I went to a website where the encryption wasn't valid, it would pop up with a window that basically warns you like, hey, it's not encrypted here. Any data you put in could be intercepted. Are you sure you wanna continue? And then at that point, you can make the decision. For those who are wondering, in my personal opinion, if you're not doing anything on the website, if it's just a static page, or if you're browsing the menu, that's probably okay. If you're entering any kind of passwords, usernames, or payment info, I'd be a little sketchy at that point. And that is pretty much it. Like I said, there are some guides out there that talk about how to use the about config, and then how to harden Firefox even further. Like for example, this little pocket guy up here that literally no one ever wanted ever, boom, now it's gone. It's amazing. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But see, this is what I was talking about when I said Firefox is so much more customizable. It's so much more granular and I can really get a lot of privacy out of Firefox. And that's pretty much it. That is Firefox. Before I go, I want to give an honorable mention to the Tor browser. I explained all about the Tor network in another video, which I will link in the description. The Tor browser is a modified version of Firefox, but it's honestly so much more than that. It comes with a lot of neat features, like a powerful content blocker called NoScript, the ability to isolate each tab and change your relay periodically, and a ton of powerful behind the scenes tools that help prevent or fool browser fingerprinting. Browser fingerprinting is a complicated subject that probably deserves a video on its own, but the short version is that it's a set of very complicated techniques designed to identify your browser, even when you're using things like a VPN or blocking cookies. It is very hard to outsmart, partially because we know so little about how it actually works, as the companies who use it are understandably very tight-lipped about it, because if we knew how it worked, we would try to outsmart it. The Tor browser is considered one of the best ways to outsmart browser fingerprinting with very little effort, so that is worth noting. It is a very powerful tool to have in your privacy toolkit. However, before you start using it, I recommend you watch the video I mentioned to learn more about the Tor network and how to use it properly. If you followed the advice in this video, regardless of whether you chose Brave or Firefox or even Tor, you should have created a browser that is a massive improvement over Google Chrome in terms of privacy while still retaining decent security. One final note. If you decide to go with a browser I haven't listed here, like LibreWolf or on Google Chromium, again, that is okay. 
Just be sure that you know what you're doing. For example, if the browser doesn't auto update, make sure that you check for updates regularly on your own. Set reminders so that you don't forget. Know the shortcomings of your browser of choice and how to mitigate them. There is no perfect browser, not even Firefox or Brave. Those are just the two that I consider to be the less of the evils. They all have their own flaws and drawbacks. So whatever you go with, make sure you do your research, know what's right for you and know how to manage the risks. Remember, that's what this privacy stuff is really all about, identifying and managing risks. Remember once again that you can help support the new oil. You can help these videos keep going. If you want a text version of all the plugins and settings and stuff that I just listed here, or if you just wanna learn more about other privacy and security topics, be sure to visit thenewoil.org.